Hi, I'm Christine. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I think I have eight historical romances that I've read this year and loved. So I don't think it's any surprise that I love historical romances. So I thought it'd be fun today to just chat about, I think I have eight on my list, eight new historical romances. Well, new to me, ones that I've read this year that I wanted to talk about that I've enjoyed. I'm always looking for like the next best historical romance. I have read hundreds of historical romances in the past, I don't know what, four years now. And so I'm always just looking for more that I can love and fall in love with and obsess over, fall in love with series, whatever the case. So yeah, I have eight of them to talk about today. So first up is Define Out the Heart by Joanna Lindsay. First of all, a moment for this epic gorgeous <laughs> cover. I love it so so much. So this one's actually one that I read for my book club. So I'm a co-host for the Historical Hellions Book Club, which is a historical romance book club where we read books published before the year 2000. We always pick a new book every month to read and it's just so much fun. There's definitely some hits and misses in there, but I had a really fun time with this one. So this book was published in 1989, but like I said, I read it in 2024 and I had an entertaining good time with it. This is a medieval romance. So basically it's set in England in 1192 and we're following the heroine who is an heiress of all of this land, these estates, and things like that. Her parents have both passed away and so it's kind of left to her to run all of these things and people keep like coming at her trying to propose to her, marry her, just to get access to her land and fortunes. There was even some like kidnapping plots in there where people were trying to force her into a marriage. The beginning of the story actually starts off with the heroine trying to save her castle from this mini attack trying to happen. I absolutely just love how strong and independent the heroine is in this one. She is not afraid to stand up for her people and fight for things like she'll go put on the chain mail. She will get out there and protect her lands and her people. So the hero and the crew that he's traveling with, we meet them in the story as well. And basically he's been hired or is being paid by somebody to grab the heroine and deliver her to them so that they can marry her. And like I said, gain access to all of her fortunes. So the hero and his crew kind of show up at the right time where they end up saving the heroine, saving the castle from that attack happening at the beginning of the story. So she lets them in to her castle where they can kind of stay the night. And then in the middle of the night, he ends up kidnapping her. And so she wakes up, she's being kidnapped and taken away by the hero and his friends. And so they tell her like, yeah, I have to go like deliver you to this guy who wants to marry you. And so she's like, uh, dude, what are you doing? Like, you could just marry me and have access to all of my lands and fortunes. Like, why would you take this small payment from somebody when you could like get the bigger prize here? <laughs> so I really just loved her kind of like agency and taking control of her own life. And she's like, you know what, if I'm going to be forced into a marriage, I'm going to pick the man I am proposing to and marrying. And so it ends up this kind of like marriage of convenience. So it kind of picks up from there. And it's just a fun time. The hero in this one is definitely kind of like that alpha hero who doesn't think that the heroine can enjoy anything or have her own thoughts. So I love how she puts him into his place and like the first night when she doesn't enjoy their bedchamber together she definitely lets him know and kind of teaches him ways to please her. So I just had a great time with this one. Like if you want a medieval older historical romance highly recommend this one. All right next up is Any Duke in a Storm by Amelie Howard. I absolutely loved this one so so much. Probably my favorite newer historical romance release of this year. So this one is the fourth book in her Daring Dukes series and this whole series I've had a great time with. I feel like they just keep getting better and better with this one being the favorite of mine so far in the series. These are all available on Hoopla as well, the audiobooks. So definitely check there if you have access to that, because like I said, the audios are so good. This series I've really enjoyed. I love the diversity that we're getting with these characters, with these settings. They look like they're set in like a ballroom or Regency type setting, but they're definitely not. Like this one takes place at sea and I had such a fun time with it. So like I said, this one takes place at sea. The heroine is actually a countess, but she's also this like international spy. And so she has been posing as this badass captain for quite a few years. So like I said, she's undercover. She's been posing as this captain of a smuggling ship and where she has like all of these women sailors underneath her and they're all working together. And she's basically trying to infiltrate this smuggling ring. And so that's how she ends up meeting the hero. This one, if you want like high seas and nonstop adventures, like I said, a badass heroine, we have her kind of being the dom in their relationship, which is so much fun. I love like the good boy times that we get. We of course, like I said, get pirates and smugglers. We have a fast paced plot. We have some demisexual and pansexual representation as well with one of the characters, which I really enjoyed. We have the hero Hero falling first, forced proximity, a found family, secrets, intrigue, just all of the fun throughout the Caribbean. Highly recommend this one if you haven't checked it out yet. Next up is Tapestry by Karen Rainey. So here is the cover for this one. This one's actually a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I had a good time with this one. This one is another one that was one of our historical Hellions book club picks. So this one starts off with a hero. He's back from war. He's lost an eye. He's injured. And so he has a lot of things going on. If you can see on this cover on the back as well, he's wearing a leather mask. So it definitely leans into the Beauty and the Beast retelling. So he is an Earl, but he's kind of just kept to himself. And so at the beginning of the story, we actually see the heroine posing as like a housekeeper and getting a position at his house. Basically, she knew him when she was a teenager. He's always been older than her. 
but when her parents passed away he actually ended up kind of helping her out taking her in making sure she was looked after when she was kind of a young child slash teenager and so she's always had this like love for him and held him up on this pedestal and so when he came back from war she's been writing to him and wanting to see him but he doesn't read the letters he turns everybody away so she's like okay the only way I can get to his house is to pose as a housekeeper and work there so she ends up kind of going undercover at his house she I think she wears a wig and she definitely changes her clothes and gives him a fake name and so he doesn't like recognize her at all and so she's just like so determined and I loved how she ends up being the one to like kind of show up in his room take off all of her clothes and she's ready to get things going <laughs> so it kind of goes from there this one is very much high on the melodrama and the emotional elements so definitely know that going in their romance is so so sweet it has some like ups and downs in the beginning because of course you know he's gonna find out that she kind of duped him and he doesn't realize who she is at first it kind of goes from there but their romance so sweet and so tender and so cute I really loved them together but they definitely go through it they go through the emotional journey so yeah just know that but this is Tapestry by Karen Rainey all right next up is It Takes a Rake by Anna Bennett so this is the third book in her Rogues to Lovers series I've really enjoyed the first book and then this third book in the series you can totally read them in any order but they are just such a fun time so if you want a series that is set outside of London outside of ballrooms and things like that this series I highly recommend it's set at this super cute little charming seaside harbor town and away from the town from society so the hero and the heroine in this one they both have known one another since childhood they grew up in the same small harbor town and when they were teenagers they both got internships at his grandfather's architect firm they were both aspiring architects and they always had this kind of like rivalry to their friendship slash relationship so the heroine has stayed in the harbor town and she has been working at his grandfather's architect firm and she's just been kind of thriving there and so now the hero he actually took off but now he is back home after four years away his father passed away he's there to kind of help out his mother and possibly take over his grandfather's architect firm and so now the hero and the heroine are back around one another again that's when they have banter right from the start when he shows back up again and also they become architect rivals again where basically their town is having this like competition to build something epic and amazing and so the heroine wants to win of course and so she's going to enter but she needs his help because she's not really great with kind of the measurements and all of the like logistical side of things but she's super creative and so she asks him for his help and so she's like in return I can help you out as well so she ends up finding out that he's kind of crushing on somebody not realizing that it is her that he's crushing on so she's like I can help you out and win the woman that you are obsessed with like women love rakes so I can help you be charming and kind of just like please the person that you're trying to get the interest of not knowing that it is herself the whole time so definitely one that is cute and charming I love how the hero falls first and she's trying to like you know make him the man of somebody's dreams and not knowing that she's the mystery girl he's trying to impress really enjoyed this one if you haven't checked out this series highly recommend because I feel like it's very underrated all right next up is the gift by Julie Garwood so this was another historical hellions book club pick this year we definitely had some misses this year but the bangers were bangers like this one was so so good I've read a handful of Julie Garwood's books and I feel like this one might be my new favorite I had such a good time with this one so this is a historical romance with an arranged marriage setup so basically there is a hero and there is this child bride thing happening which you see at the beginning of the story but then we actually cut to 14 years later so it's not as salacious as it sounds so this one the humor in it is so much fun it was just so cute and charming basically in here it starts off with the heroine and she's trying to like take off she wants grand adventures so it kicks off with the heroine trying to escape in the night and so the hero actually ends up seeing her because he came to abduct her that night for reasons and so he's like well let me just watch and see what she's up to so he kind of follows behind her and it's just such a fun opening scene to their story of him just like seeing what she's up to and like trying to abduct her along the way as well but she ends up going on his ship anyways and he's like well this is perfect because I was planning to bring you here anyways <laughs> this one it does take place on a ship but like the hero is a former privateer and we actually thought when we picked this one up that it'd be more pirate time so it's not but like I said it's still a fun time anyways the heroine in this one is kind of one of those heroines who's very naive and she doesn't understand a lot of things going on and she kind of gets herself into these tricky situations or funny moments because of her naivete which I thought was just super fun and charming like she's always meaning to do the best she wants to learn she wants to help out on the ship and things like that but her like not knowing what's going on kind of gets her into trouble a lot which I just thought she was so charming so this one like I said it is an arranged marriage as well so it's basically a setup where the king wanted these two feuding families who've been fighting for generations to like just get along keep the peace and so that's how their arranged marriage came to be I really enjoyed this one loved how it turned out like I said I'm not usually like one who likes rom-coms so to speak but this one like the humor in it was just like the right amount super witty and fun definitely recommend next up is In Want of a Viscount by Lorraine Heath if you know around here Lorraine Heath is my historical romance queen I love her books so so much and this one is the newest book release from her this, this is the third book in her Chessman Masters of Seduction series you can definitely read these books as standalones but I think it's best read in order because Lorraine Heath loves to have familiar faces and places and all of those 
things kind of show up over and over again in her books. And so it's best if you're kind of submerged in the Heathverse, so to speak, and just like know all the things happening in the background with these characters. This one, the heroine is an American and she's an inventor who has come to England with her brother and her mother. And they're there to get business investors for their new business where she's basically trying to create this typewriter. So in this one, the heroine meets the hero and his friends because she comes to them and wants them to be business investors. And so we see the previous night how the heroine actually met the hero at this women's club where basically any women's pleasures can be satisfied. And so he shared a kiss with her and kind of disappeared in the night. And so they already have this like a little bit of a chance meeting and now they're meeting again and kind of around one another. This one I really enjoyed. I love the second book in the series so much and this third book I loved as well, but they're totally different. Like the second book was more angsty where this one is more kind of sweet and romantic. And I just loved the very like quiet moments we get with the hero and the heroine. The hero in this one has some very complicated feelings with his father. And basically his father was like a man about town, had tons of children with tons of ladies, treated women horribly. And the hero has always promised that he would never be anything like his father. So he's gone the complete 180 of that and kind of avoids women because he doesn't want anything bad to happen to them in his life. And so when he meets the heroine, he definitely falls for her and is so pulled to her and doesn't understand like why or what's going on. The heroine's always been seen as kind of quirky and different and like she'd rather see how things work or how machines are built and kind of all of those things. And so other men of society and all of that don't understand her. They think she's strange. And so I loved how the hero totally got her. He speaks her love language. He takes her to places to show her like how the inner workings work. And it was just so, so good. Like if you want to be swept up with a super sweet romance, definitely recommend this one. I recommend all Lorraine Heath's books in general, but this one was so fun too. All right, another new release from this year is The Stranger I Wed by Harper St. George. So this is the first book in a new Gilded Age series from her. And I just really enjoyed this one as the start to a new series. It wasn't perfect for me, not my favorite by this author. But like I said, it's a super solid start to the series. This one, the premise grabbed my attention right from the start where basically the heroine and her two sisters are illegitimate daughters of this like very well known man of society. He is from one of like New York's wealthiest and founding families and he has always shunned them and like everybody in society knows that they are his illegitimate children as well. And so they don't really have the best of anything. So the story starts off with the heroine's grandmother actually passing away and she is the mother of the heroine's father. And so basically she's like, you know what? I regretted everything that happened in life, how we shunned you. I totally want to make amends and give you and your sisters this inheritance. But there's only like a little bit of a caveat where you have to get married in like X amount of time. So the heroine and her sisters set off to London to husband hunt where basically they're like, okay, we want like titled respectable gentlemen so we can gain access to our inheritance. So the heroine ends up having some friends in London, which actually are the heroines of the previous series from this author. So you get to see them kind of make appearances in this book as well, where basically they're like, okay, we'll hold this like husband party for you, basically, where they're basically like, we'll invite all the eligible title gentlemen to this so you can like husband hunt. So that's when the heroine ends up meeting the hero who's actually an earl. And so he's kind of come to terms with the fact that, you know, aristocracy is changing at this time. And he's gonna need to just like marry, get some funds in his accounts and just get an heir. So the hero is already kind of pulled to the heroine, but he's like, you know what, we just need to make this work. So he ends up proposing to the heroine and then she kind of throws him for a loop because she's like, okay, we'll be married for this amount of time for you to gain access to some of my money. But then we're also going to get a divorce because I need to go do my own thing. So yeah, it turns into this marriage of convenience with kind of like this caveat to it. I just had a great time with this one. Like I said, it's not my favorite from this author, but it is a great start to the series. All right. And the next up is Queen Charlotte. This one is a co-written book by Julia Quinn and Shonda Rhimes. This one I had so much fun with. Loved it so, so much. If, if you haven't watched the Queen Charlotte Netflix adaptation, I highly recommend. I watched it last year. Loved it so, so much. I'm so glad I waited though and got to this book this year and took some time in between because they're definitely very similar. Like this reads as a manuscript for the series basically. So I liked that I had that kind of time in between to appreciate both for what they are. But this, ugh, just so, so good. I love Queen Charlotte. I love King George or just George as he goes by. It's just so emotional and heartbreaking and just, ugh, pulls on your heartstrings. So, so good. Highly recommend. I really enjoyed seeing not only Charlotte's relationship with George building throughout this book, but also just her friendships and relationships that she has with people around her. I loved seeing her relationship with Brimsley, who is a man who kind of works for her in the castle and he's always five steps behind her at all times, always with her. If you've seen Bridgerton, then you know he's kind of always around her as well. I also really enjoyed her relationship with Lady Danbury, seeing her throughout the years and her strength of a character just so, so good when they have their like very real talk and become honest friends. It's just so good. I love their moments together. I will say if you've watched the Netflix adaptation, you saw like more times with Lady Violet in it. But in this book, there's none of that, which I actually enjoyed a little bit more. Even though I love Lady Violet, I was like, 
she has her own place in the Bridgerton series. I loved just Queen Charlotte, Lady Danbury, Brimsley, of course, King George, like all of them just shining in this book. Just so, so good. If you want an emotional one, highly recommend. The audiobook is fantastic. You will cry. It's so good. Highly recommend. All right. So I think those are all of the books that I have to recommend today. I'm actually still reading some historical romances right now. So hopefully soon I will have another video to do where I can share some more historical romances that I've read and enjoyed this year. Definitely let me know in the comments if you've read any of these, if you plan to pick any of these up. If you've had a historical romance that you've read this year and fallen in love with, definitely let me know that too because I'm always in the mood to pick up more historical romances. If you'd rather leave me an emoji in the comments instead today to let me know that you watched this video, maybe leave me like the crown, the tiara emoji since I am all about Queen Charlotte and just obsessed with this book and their story. So yeah, definitely do that. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I will see you in my next one. <laughs>